Now, th this one we talked about. You guys have been watching this one down the Bay of Almost Campeche. a month. Almost a month. The area of disturbed weather in the Western Caribbean. Yeah. Right. And then it, it really developed south of Cuba. Then it was headed toward... It, it really developed... What happened was there were two lows. Okay, One actually sprung up in the uh, Yucatan Channel between uh, Mexico and Cuba. And the other one was in the Bay of Campeche. It looked like 10 days ago, it looked like the dominant low was going to be in the Bay of Campeche. And initially, all the models, everything, jumped on that system, and they were, and it was going to go into uh, south, extreme south Texas, okay, right. below Brownsville. Well, guess what? The low that came up over the, the Yucatan and formed just north of the Yucatan became the dominant low, pulled in the energy and the moisture from the other low, and they conjoined out there, and then just sat there percolating inhibited greatly by wind shear uh, until last week. Uh, the wind shear was just was screaming across the Gulf of Mexico, just tearing everything apart up above, not letting anything congeal at the surface. When that wind shear relaxed and you had the 81, 82 degree waters out there, then you were going to get something to ramp up. Fortunately, all the pieces of the puzzle never came together. Now, again, let me explain. We had a tropical storm here, folks, a minimal tropical storm. The highest sustained winds ever in this storm was 50 miles an hour, 50. That's a moderate. Tropical storm is at 35, goes to 75. <coughs> so we were at 50, um, but it didn't matter. This is why in 1989, John Wilson of Lee County and I, uh, did a workshop at the National Hurricane Conference. I'll never forget this, and people have mentioned this time and time again. It was in Miami, and we did a workshop, and the title of it was Why We Hate Tropical Storms. The emergency manager, now don't take this wrong, folks, but the emergency manager would much rather be dealing with a well-formed Category 2 or 3 hurricane because you know the enemy. You know what you're dealing with. You know where it's going. Know and you know doing. where it's going. You know what it's doing. With a system like this, it was all over the board. You looked yesterday, and I posted this satellite picture to, to Facebook for people to look at. You could see, clearly defined, the low-level cloud swirl of Debbie out there over the Gulf of Mexico. But every single bit of the rainfall at that point was either over the Jacksonville, Savannah, Brunswick area where they got hammered or it was those bands cycling around coming down off the Gulf over us one after the other like this morning. Here's the overview uh, Tommy from 7 a.m. from the Tampa Bay weather. Tropical Depression Debbie was located near Florida's east coast north of Daytona Beach this morning forecast to continue eastward movement over the Atlantic Ocean. Although the Depression Center has now moved out of the immediate forecast area Low clouds and drizzle have pushed into the north and central counties, and a convective band of rain continues to train along with southwest winds, keep on coastal water levels slightly elevated. There you go. So there you go. Yep. And what's your, what, what's your site there? That was, a, that was an email to me from oh. Tampa Bay Weather. Oh, okay. Very good. We get uh, email updates. Now, the tides uh, <coughs> today, let's quickly look uh, yeah. at, at the Charlotte County tides. Let's take a look. Uh, first of all, let's look at... Uh, well, let's look at Boca Grande and see what time the outer water uh, Boca Grande is, because uh, this will give us a clue. Uh, high tide has passed. Was it 7.42 a.m.? And actually, it was a fairly low high tide. It was a 1.25. All right, let's look at El Jabin. El Jabin, critically important because that's where the, you're going to have the combination of water coming down the Mayaca River uh, out of Sarasota County, where they have had flooding issues over off River Road, Mayaka Drive. They had right. houses underwater yesterday. I talked to the director of Sarasota County uh, who called me to, to update me on that. Uh, the El Jabin tide is uh, is actually a, a pretty high one. It, this is a high tide. 1.81. A 1.81 high time. at 10.09 this morning. At 10.09 this morning. Um, Englewood is, uh, would be next. Englewood at Lemon Bay. Uh, the tide, next tide there is uh, it has occurred. That was at 7:34. Uh, it was a 153, a 153, and then finally at Punta Gorda, uh, up inside uh, the Peace River, Charlotte Harbor. There's a lot of tides on this chart. Let's get to Punta Gorda, and we'll see. Okay, a lot of peas. 
in the tide because there's so many ports. Right. All right. Punta Gorda, Charlotte Harbor, Florida. Uh, yeah, another very high high tide, 1.83. That's the highest we've seen in the uh, last what, couple of days yeah, at, at uh, 9.42. Okay. So oh, if yeah. if indeed, um, <laughs> and, and let's take a look at the um, let's take a look at the Charlotte County Airport uh, and see what the winds um, are looking like there. Uh, we can no, get there's an ASOS machine, which is automated surface observation system there at what, the airport. What time will that tide hit the Peace River? I mean, up like toward the Navigator. Well, it'll push up. It'll push up a little, a little later, a okay, little further. About 10 30. Yeah, then it'll go up there. But let's let's take a look and see what the latest conditions reported are. Um, wind speeds are not significant today. Wind speeds are out of the west at 10, so that's good. So it, it really, it's just going right. to be the tide. And the other issue. Fortunately, the, the water coming down the Peace River uh, from Polk County, Hardy County, DeSoto County, uh, not real significant yet. It's going to be in a couple of days. You know, I don't even know, how long has Dennis uh, been in the area and owned the Navigator? 17 has, years. 17 years? Well, then certainly he can remember back in his early days here uh, when it was an annual thing to, to have that river closed. Uh, to uh, canoe navigation up up the river, you know, when the canoe outpost would close and other places, uh, and even the bridge on uh, on 70 uh, would be compromised at times by the Peace River, uh, because that watershed, all that water coming out of Polk County, Hardy County, uh, DeSoto, all runs into the Peace River, Horse Creek, of Horse course, Creek, Dog Creek, uh, uh, all there. of them, yeah, and then uh, makes its way down into uh, Prairie Creek. Uh, in, in Charlotte County. The one thing we always get though, people ask about the Peace River. When they say there's flooding along the Peace River, well they look at Peace River and see Punta Gorda. It's never really an issue uh, because it opens into Charlotte Harbor. You know, it may raise uh, the water levels a tad, but not that much. When it does become an issue is if there's a push from the southwest in terms of a surge event and right. the two coincide. That's what you've got going on up in uh, Pasco County. Uh, you've had that happening. The Ancloat River is trying to drain into the Gulf of Mexico, and the onflow on sh onshore winds have have kept that from happening. And you've got neighborhoods up there with three plus <coughs> feet of water throughout the neighborhoods, and they evacuated uh, over seven thousand people in Newport Ritchie yesterday. That's amazing. Um, it is, and and those are the things. Those are the the instances that you've got to take into effect when you're going to declare an emergency evacuation. Uh, by by colors, red and orange, you know, time to time to leave. Looking at all those factors. Yeah, here's good news. The last wind gust that we saw reported, and this went, you could go back for several days. Uh, in fact, let's go back to last night. We had wind gusts at um, last night at 653 of 26 miles an hour, then 30, then 29, 29, 29, 32, and then the gusts basically stopped. Uh, at to, uh, let's see, what time is it that the last, uh, oh, right after midnight. Uh, just before 1 a.m., uh, winds were out of the southwest at 14, and there were no gusts. Uh, and then you had a couple of gusts uh, in the wee small hours, and, and we've not had any gustiness since 4.53 this morning on that, uh, on that uh, wind anemometer at the Charlotte County Airport. So that's good news, and that means that the, uh, uh, the water is not being pushed, pushed, pushed up into uh, the river and the harbor anymore. So this event, whatever it, whatever transpires, um, is the big problem. Well, the big problem now is this band of rain, which is training. It's training right across us. And the reason it's not moving from north to south is because of the direction that that its uh, mothership, Debbie, is moving away it's from. Still, the, it's still it's still pulling away yeah. and and pulling this moisture across us. Um, and until uh, you know that <coughs> happens, we're going to continue to see this uh, this rainfall. Yeah. Tommy, it's, you want to continue with the weather, please? Yes, I can do that because uh, just looking at the radar, uh, we've got 50% chance in the forecast, but 50% of Charlotte County is now covered with rain, 